Let's have an in-depth look at Apple new Liquid Retina XDR display that is built into the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro that comes with the M1 Pro and M1 Max Sosi. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. This is going to be a conversation about Apple Liquid Retina XDR display that is built into the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro that has Apple Silicon, that is the M1 Pro and M1 Max. So if you have these new computers, what I'm about to share with you would definitely be relevant. If you have the previous generation MacBook Pro, iMac or MacBook Air or MacBook for that matter, a lot of the information that I'm about to share with you, including the reference mode, white point fine tune XDR may not necessarily apply to you. So let's jump right into it. Starting out, this is Apple new display technology. It is mini LED and is probably one of the very first time we see mini LED inside a laptop computer. Although there may be some PC out there that uses this technology, I haven't seen that as much. I mostly see OLED or organic LED for that matter. The way how this technology is implemented is very different than the Apple laptop of the past. So the previous generation Apple displays that they use in a laptop generally uses LED backlights. So you may ask, well, they're both LED. What's the main difference? Well, in the previous generation, usually there is a light bar at the very bottom of the LCD. And that light, the LED white light is actually shining through a diffusion layer that is lighting up the entire panel. That means that if an area needs to go dark, what it can do is that the pixels just won't show anything or it will just show dark, but it can't really shut down all the way because that diffusion layer is constantly letting light shine through from the LED bar that's at the bottom. To solve that problem, well, now we have mini LED technology inside this display with multiple different zones. So there are multiple different small LEDs that are in a group of four across this entire panel. So there are so many different zones here. And the great thing about this display technology is that each individual zone can dim down by itself. Therefore, you can get true blacks on the display. And what this also enables as well is what Apple call XDR, which stands for extended dynamic range. This is greater than HDR because HDR, what we know of generally goes up to around, I would say like 1000 nits or so. The XDR part of this displays allows the panel to go up as high as 1600 nits. And if it needs to, it can sustain itself for a longer duration at around 1000 nits. Granted, if you're using your laptop in a very hot environment, sometimes the XDR function of the display would get disabled and the laptop needs to cool down before. So that's some caveat there. But most of the time, you're going to be able to do this and enjoy content in HDR without any problem. The best way for me to demonstrate the way how this whole thing works is to pull up a clip from Final Cut Pro. And I'm going to show you that right now. So if I go into Final Cut Pro, this is a clip that I have filmed in HDR. And you can see that the clip is the brightest part of the display. To show you the difference between this clip and, for example, a standard dynamic range, this is what a standard dynamic range clip looks like. It looks fairly dull, it looks fairly moot, but the moment I go to this clip, that portion of the screen just lights up right away. I can also go in and, let's see, take this into full screen so it can also show HDR throughout the entire screen like that too, which I think is really awesome. So this laptop is really great in terms of bringing HDR technology to the consumer level so that anyone that have access to the laptop can really go in and master HDR content better than I would say any other type of displays are out there falling short of spending $40,000 on a Sony mastering display that can really do HDR. This is really cool. So with that in mind, there are a few things and a few questions I have been receiving about this display that I want to clarify up. So let's go into the system preferences of the machine and let's go into display and talk about some of these few things. So the moment I click on display, this will look different than the previous generation Mac OS. This is Monterey and the way how it looks right now. The first thing you're gonna see is the way how the display is arranged. And the reason why I have BenQ SCB271C link up this display or to this laptop is because I want to show you some of the differences between the built-in XDR display and also the external display, whatever you may have linked up to the system. So what we're gonna do is click on display setting and this will show us the display setting. We can pick the screen on the left side. For example, this is the built-in Liquid Retina XDR display and this is the BenQ SW271C. There are some differences between these two. Number one, the internal display has a brightness slider. 
the BenQ one doesn't have it because you have to control that through the display or through the calibration software, for example, Palette Master Element. The other thing what you don't see in this dialog is the color selection, whereas you can choose a color profile for the BenQ display, but you can't really do that for Apple built-in display, especially the XDR one. This is something that you can do in the previous generation laptop. So you may wonder what's really going on here. Well, essentially what Apple have done is a really great job calibrating this display from the factory so that the display itself has different reference mode, which we're gonna talk about in a second. But if you really want to access the color profile for the built-in Liquid Retina XDR display, can you do that? Absolutely. What you have to do is launch a program called Color Sync Utility. And if you click on the device tab at the very top in the middle, you can come into display and choose color LCD. Right now, you can see that it has a factory profile and it also has a current profile. And you can just simply change the profile here. So for instance, if you started a calibration process and your calibrator is not fully compatible with this display or the calibration software crash and it makes your display look really weird, you don't need to go in and restore your computer to get everything looking bad. You can simply come to the current profile, click on that drop down list and say set to factory. It's going to ask you to confirm with a password and you're pretty much good to go and it will restore the profile back to the factory setting. But right now I'm running this on, you can see like the profile from the factory and you can apply custom profiles to here too. If you want to apply custom profile, you can simply choose other like I had before and you can just choose it from this list. Normally when you're done with the calibration, the calibration software itself would automatically set the profile and I have verified that the profile does get saved with the system, so if you restart, you relaunch and everything, the custom profile will stay with the display. It's just that Apple have kind of shows to hide that function a little bit from the user because they genuinely believe that this is a really good display and we don't really need to calibrate it. So for the most part, I genuinely agree with them. I think that they have calibrated this display extremely well from the factory. All right, so now let's look at the setting for the built-in Liquid Retina XDR display. You can choose the different scaling. You can choose default for display. At the very top, I'm going to do a separate video talking about this. And you can use this display as like the main display, as extended or as mirroring. But the way how they do this can be somewhat confusing at times, especially if you have multiple display link up to the system. But that is for another time. With this right now, I can go in and change the brightness of the display without any problem whatsoever. In fact, I can also set to automatic brightness where the laptop would use the camera sensors on the screen and the camera array on the notch at the very top to sense how bright the room is and adjust the display brightness accordingly. So if I'm in a very bright environment, the laptop screen is going to light up. If I'm in a darker environment, the laptop screen is automatically going to dim down. Same thing is happening with True Tone. I can certainly enable that. And True Tone will both affect the internal and external display. And it's based on the color temperature of the light that's hitting on the sensor at the very top. True Tone is designed to match the white point of display to the white point of a light that you have in a room. It's kind of good if you really want to just enjoy everything and not having like an experience where the screen is definitely too blue compared to the room environment. But overall, if you're doing color critical work, having True Tone and automatic brightness turn on is not necessarily a good thing. Now, the other thing we have to also talk about is the fact that there is the word preset here in the display preferences setting dialog. And this is what Apple refers to in their white paper as reference mode. And I'll leave a link to multiple of their articles, which I find really helpful in the description below as well. But essentially in the preset mode, there are different modes that you can set. And there are some that are already preset from Apple by default, and you can choose those. So what I want to do is break these down a little bit and talk about each of these settings and how it behaves. So let's start out with these first top two, which is on the very top and there you can see there's a line demarcation separating the top two to the rest of these modes. So these top two modes are just pretty much the way how your display would behave in the previous generation MacBook Pro, meaning that you can go in and enable True Tone, you can automatically adjust brightness. It will do all those things, but you have these options to choose number one between Apple XDR Display P3 1600 nits or Apple Display P3 500 nits. So you may wonder what's the difference between those two. Well, the top one would allow the displays to ramp up to as high as 1600 nits on HDR content. If you have chosen this mode, for instance, P3 500 nits, 
The display will still go to as bright, but it's only going to show as bright as 500 nits. So let's pull up the Final Cut Pro timeline again that I have in HDR. And you can see that it is still the brightest part of the display, but it wasn't as bright as it was before. And now the brightness between these two is much closer to each other. And that's where the difference between the two comes in, because I know that on the previous setting, the bright over here is becoming a lot brighter. And that is the difference between the two, depending on the setting that you want to use. Let's minimize Final Cut Pro. The other thing that you need to note about these two settings in general is that even if you choose Apple XDR display, the max amount of brightness that you can put your system through with something like this is still 500 nits. You can't push the system beyond the 500 nits unless you have a program or a calibrator program that can really trigger the laptop or the firmware on the laptop so that it ramps the screen up to the 1000 or the 1600 nits or you have an HDR content, whether that be from Final Cut Pro that you're editing from YouTube or any other source you're streaming or Apple TV for that matter, then you can go to the nits point that exceeds the 500. So even in the XDR mode, the maximum that you can put your system through manually, it's going to be 500 nits and I have done an extensive test on this. So between these two modes, the max brightness as we bring them up are exactly the same. It's just that these two modes allows you to really go in and choose whether you want the HDR to really ramp up really high or not. And sometimes you may not want the HDR to ramp up all the way because when it does, I mean, the bright becomes extremely white and if you're in a dark room, your eyes can somewhat hurt. And sometimes limiting that is a good idea. And as I mentioned, with these two modes at the very top, you will see the automatic adjust brightness and true tone is enabled, allowing you to manually adjust the brightness of display as you would have done before. Below that are the preset modes that come from the factory or the preset reference mode, and they have different modes that you can choose from. For example, all these modes correspond to a different luminance point or different brightness, and these are predefined from Apple. But it doesn't mean that you are locked into them. You can certainly go in and change this according to what you need. So for instance, a lot of times I'm a photographer, but what they have done for photography is they set the display to, I believe, like around 160 nits, which for the most part, when I'm doing the editing, I think that is too bright. So what I generally like to do is have my display even darker, as you're seeing right now, is even dimmer than what Apple have set. So what you can simply do in this mode is go in and change and customize the brightness of the display. And if you need to run a calibration or find a custom luminance for the display, the best way to do it is use these preset mode and create a custom one. So what we're gonna do is scroll down to the very bottom and click on customize preset. When you want to customize preset, there's a whole bunch of things from the list and you can choose the one that you want to start out with. So for instance, if you do a lot of video, for instance, and you do HD video, you want to use BT709 and BT1886 at the camera curve. You can just highlight that and click on plus. And what it's going to do is take that setting as a template and you can go in and customize all the settings in here. I'm going to show you how to customize a setting for photography. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select photography and I will click on plus and it will say to copy at the very end there. Uh, what I would do in this situation is I would just type in the name. For example, I will put down L like 100 and this would stand for luminance 100 and you can go in and choose a different color gamut. So you can choose between P3, Rec 709, sRGB, the PAL color space and also NTSC. What I will tell you right now is that between testing, choosing between P3 and Rec 709 sRGB, the color gamut is pretty much about the same so it doesn't really cap the color gamut in any way at all and most of the time what I would recommend is just stick with P3 even though you want to work in sRGB because there's really no point because it doesn't really change the gamut of the display even with calibration and I've done some tests on that. The white point you can choose between D65, D50, or you can also enter a custom white point in using the XY coordinate as well. That is certainly something that you can do. I'll leave this at D65. And the next option you have is the SDR transfer function. Right now, this says pure power. Essentially, this is what is called a gamma curve. And you can choose BT1880. Six, or you can use pure power, and this is using Gamma 2.2. You can use Apple System Boost, enable HDR content. Right now, I don't have that enabled, but I can certainly do that. And if I do that, it will ask me like, hey, how bright do I want the display to be in HDR? And you can set the amount of luminance you want. You can type in 1600 nits and have it go up all the way, or 1000, depending on what you want to do. I'm not going to have that set. And SDR, this is the luminance for the standard dynamic range. I'm going to type in 100. 
And once you do that, you click on save preset. Right now we're in the preset mode. When we're in the preset mode, you're going to notice a few things that's happening. Number one, automatic adjust brightness and the brightness slider is pretty much locked out in general. If you try to use the key, you will see that the lock does come up. This is pretty much the set brightness mode when you're doing color critical work, when you want the display luminant not to change at all based on the environment. I see this as a really awesome step for pro workflow because, I mean, let's put it this way. Sometimes Pro don't go in and disable automatic brightness, so their display brightness is all over the place. And having something like this is definitely going to lock the brightness in. So what you're seeing right now when you're choosing these reference mode for the brightness point and the display brightness lockout is the behavior that you can expect. And this is something that is normal. Same thing at the very top when you choose Apple XDR or Apple Display, the maximum brightness that you can bring the display up to manually is 500 nits and you can't exceed that. Now, what I'm going to do is show you one more thing, and you can see that I have this from the list. I can also go into the very bottom in the moment I'm in these preset mode or my own custom preset or reference mode, I can choose to fine tune calibration. And I'm not going to go over too much into detail with this. I will refer you to the links that I'm putting below to how to fine tune the calibration for these display. You can certainly choose to do that. So I'm going to cancel this out for now. But I have already gone in and fine-tuned this calibration, which you will see at the very bottom, the current fine-tune. It has a date on there right now. You can always come back and restore the fine-tuning, but what I can tell you is that when you do the fine-tune calibration, it doesn't apply to just the one reference mode that you choose. It applies to any of the reference mode that you go into. So, for instance, if I go into HDTV, that fine-tune calibration is still being applied to this mode. So once you have done a fine-tune calibration, it does it to the entire display panel in all of the color or the reference mode that you choose. So that's something to note about the setting in general. Now, the other thing is that you also have the option to go in and choose variable refresh rate. And this is how like this laptop is really awesome with conserving battery power. But you can also go in and choose a fixed refresh rate as well. So if you want the display to refresh 60 times per second, you can certainly do that. What ProMotion does is that it allows the display to refresh as fast as 120 hertz. That is 120 times per second. And it can go down to as low as 20 times per second or 20 hertz, which right now, because I'm displaying a lot of static image, it's probably doing a 20 hertz right now because there's not a lot of changes on the display and it doesn't always need to redraw and refresh those settings. So that is a quick tip on how to use the Apple Pro Display XDR. Now, a few other things I also want to point out is that having to go into System Preferences, Display, and click on Display Setting and choose these all the time can be really cumbersome, especially if you're trying to do a pro workflow, if you want to get into the color mode really quickly. Is there another way to do this much quicker? And yes, there is. You can go to the Control Center at the very top of the screen there, click on that, and what you can simply do is the brightness. You can dial this up and down because I'm in the XDR mode right now. But what you can simply do is click on the arrow right there. And right now you can see that there are different modes. Right now I have this selected at Apple XDR P3, 1600 nits. If I click on that drop down list, now I can choose between all the preset modes that I have. For instance, if I want to go to photography, luminance 100 nits, I would just click on that and the display brightness will lock up. And I can jump back and forth between those two modes. So if you're a pro or if you want to edit in a fixed brightness, this is going to be the way that you would use these computer going forward. When you're ready to work professionally or doing color critical work, you would go into these reference or these preset mode, choose them and everything is locked into place. The brightness is and everything is locked so you can't change them or actually change them. And this then won't change the way how you're perceiving the picture and also changing the way how the picture is coming out or the creative content is coming out in the end. When you're ready to use your laptop for entertainment, you can simply come up here again and what I can do is click on display. I'll click on that arrow at the very top, choose from a list. And for instance, if I want to watch foundation or something on Apple TV or anything in HDR, I would just come and click on HDR display and boom, I am back in that mode. So anyway, a lot of things to cover, right? With these new displays, I think that is really great. And sometimes what we're used to is what we're expecting out of these computers and this does change the paradigm the way how the display works a little bit but overall i think that this is a good and positive experience going forward i hope that you guys learned a thing or two from this guide on apple liquid retina xdr display if you have any questions or comment leave them below please give this a like subscribe and hit on the bell you're new and remember 
in Art We Trust.